Hey guys, in this video we are going to take a look at how to respond to attribute or property changes in our Polymer components. Uh, so Polymer actually gives you a couple different ways to do this. Uh, we're going to take a look at at least two. Uh, so I'm going to create a component here. I'm going to call it app login.html and that's just going to have a tag of app dash login. So let's go ahead and create that really quick. New file app dash login.html. Okay, so here let's just create a couple quick inputs. This will be our username. Uh, so we'll do a placeholder equals username. And we'll give it a value of our attribute that we're going to create called username. We'll do another one for password. Okay, so down here we're going to initialize those as empty strings. And so uh, what's really cool is we can create a function called username changed. And it takes a signature where, where the function takes in the old value and the new value. That's going to be very familiar to anyone who's worked in Angular before. Um, but this function just automatically exists for us. I mean, we have to create it, but any attribute we have, we can just say right here, attribute changed. Uh, so in our case, we're going to do username change. And here we'll just uh, console log username changed. Whoop. And we'll drop our new value there. And then let's do that for the password as well. And we'll say password changed. Okay, so let's just try this out in the browser really quick. Load that up. Now we'll pay attention to the console here. One, two, three. Ah, we're not getting it. What did it do wrong? Username changed. Password changed. Oh, you know what? That's weird. I did not have an equal symbol there. Load that up one more time, one, two, three. So we can see that the username changed function is getting called and we're passing in that new value. And here, uh, four, five, six, we can see that the password changed function is getting called and we're passing in that, uh, that new value. So that is pretty neat, just kind of automatic, magical watchers that we don't really have to, uh, again, we do have to create them, but <clears throat> the pattern's already there. We just call this function username change, password change, attribute changed, whatever, and we immediately get access to it. Uh, so now another way we could do this, let's say that we want to validate this form somehow. So let's add in a little button here. And we'll say login. And let's give this a class of, we'll have something called login state. So uh, here, we'll say login state starts off as in valid. Let's go ahead and drop some style in for that. Uh, let's see, we're going to do button invalid and valid. And here we'll just make it visible or not. So invalid opacity is zero, valid opacity one. And then let's just give it a little transition here. One second, okay. So, here, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, that we want to direct the changes on either of these to a function called validate. And the way we do that is we drop in this object called observe, and that's an object. And the key for each thing in that object is going to be the attribute that we want to watch. So in our case, we're going to say username, and we're going to pass it to a function called validate. And we're going to say password, and we're also going to pass that to validate. Now these could be passed to anything. Technically they could probably even be passed to uh, username change and password change. Password. Okay. So let's create our validate function. And here just to start off, let's just say validate function. Okay, so let's try that out really quick. Reload here. We get our one, two, three, one, two, three. And you can see in validate function, so our validate function is getting called. And now the observe method here 
<clears throat> excuse me, is overriding these other auto magic uh, observers. So, so we've skipped past those. Uh, so observe will always win uh, when, when we use it uh, over username change or password change or attribute changed or whatever. Uh, so here, let's just do, oh, you know what, notice my login state. Oh, typo there, invalid. Nope, invalid. Okay, let me just check that really quick. Okay, cool. So our form is invalid right now. So let's just update that here and let's just give it something arbitrary. So let's say if username dot length is uh, greater than two, so it needs to be at least three characters and we'll do the same thing for password. And you know what? These both need to be this. And then we'll just say uh, this dot login state equals valid. Else invalid. Okay, so let's just try that out really quick. So one, two, three for the password. Our uh, form is still invalid at this point. One, two, three. And now our login shows up. Get rid of that and it disappears. Uh, so there you go. That is uh, a couple different ways to respond to attribute changes. You can use the observe method here, which will override these methods, uh, which are also really, really cool, uh, where you can just pass in the attribute name changed as your function name and, uh, and bring in the old value and the new value and respond to that as well. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you have a good one.